These short martial arts sticks could save your life. These are Escrima or Kali sticks, also known as Arnis. These are just about the length of your arm, going from the fingertip into your shoulder. They're often used one in each hand, but you can also defend yourself with just one. I'm gonna show you in this video how to defend yourself using short Kali sticks or Escrima sticks. First thing I want you to do though is warm up to keep the joints safe from injury. Now, of course, if you need to defend yourself, you're not gonna have time to warm up, but when you practice, you should warm up. That way you learn faster without injury. You're gonna do this forward spinning motion, letting it drop to the front. Your palms are facing the sky. Make sure to keep your hand closed. This is cheating. That might go faster, but you want this to be closed so that you really stretch everything out. You're gonna do this forward for about 30 seconds, and then you're gonna reverse it. Hello, students, good to see you. Good evening. You're pulling it back toward you this way. Get those wrists loosened up, the power in the forearm, and then I want you to start to swing it down and up. I'm gonna back up a little so you can see. Get your stomach up and in, abs tight. These later become hard, fast strikes. So you're just going to move up and down. Stomach up and in. Hello, Richard, nice to see you. Abs tight, keep your sticks in front of your body. And then I want you to split that. This will increase the range of motion as you're going back. You're getting more range of motion. You're gonna get blood flowing, pumping throughout your body, get your heart rate up. You're gonna get the synovial fluid into the joints, which are gonna help keep your shoulders strong, your elbows strong, your wrists strong. Then I want you to put that spin as you go down and then make a spin as you come up. Hello, Steve, it's good to see you. So you're spinning and then dropping and then spin in the opposite direction, bring it up, down. You wanna get traditional, put your heels together, toes go out like a duck. This bag's in my way, I'm gonna move it real quick. You asked me before what I think of that bag. I know a lot of you have seen that bag. Maybe if you've seen it online, thought about buying it, I would say skip it. That's my personal choice. Hello, Billy, good to see you. Billy Johnson's here, going down, coming up. I have it because someone donated it from their garage, meaning they just needed to get it out. They didn't want to throw it away because they had spent too much on it. It's okay for punching, you can't really kick it, it falls right over. But it's nice to practice these strikes on because it's not very thick, it's good for that. Popping chicken, what would happen if you punched me in the stomach unflexed? Uh, if I punched you in the stomach, you weren't flexing, it would probably hurt. I would imagine, I don't know, I don't know you. <laughs> you might have a cotton belly or you might have a steel belly, or whatever they, they say. Um, but do some sit-ups, squeeze it, practice keeping it flexed. All right, once you get that spinning down, you should be nice and warmed up. I want you to practice basic angle one strike coming through and then off the other shoulder back. So you're gonna learn how to fight with the stick in front of your body, which means it has to come off your shoulder and go through. Think about striking from temple to chin. We're going through from the shoulder to the other side, to the other hip. You're striking first. This is angle one coming through and you wanna bring it starting to go faster and faster. And I want you to do 30 seconds on each strike before we put them together in combination. This is the first one in your left hand. You do the other one coming through. It doesn't matter, you can do right hand first, left hand first, but spend some time going faster and harder. When you're learning how to save your life, these uh, short sticks would save your life if you know how to hit somebody with so much power that you can either break their hand as they try to reach in and stab you. Um, Corner says, read Tim Larkin's book. Yeah, good, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Learn how to hit the right targets. What target can you remove or destroy? Maybe it's the hand carrying his knife. You break that with this. You could certainly do that with a collie stick or an Escrima stick like this. And these are super inexpensive. You can learn how to train with these and then fight with any stick that you pick up off the street or in your environment, which is what I advocate. Practice with your sticks when you can and then fight when you have to. Now you're doing, you already did this side on this first shoulder, bring it to the other side bringing it through. And again, I want you to go harder and faster. This is not traditional Filipino martial arts. 
but this is the way I want you to train for self-defense. This is a little bit different. Learning how to fight with a short stick for self-defense requires that you can hit as hard and as fast as you can without losing the stick from your hand. Hello, Tim. It's good to see you. Yeah, Tim said he'll be back later to watch, but bringing it through, angle one, angle two. Now that you have those, put them together on your first hand and then practice that second angle coming off the opposite side. I want you to be able to fight with both sticks evenly. Now, when you hold your uh, screaming stick, make sure there's a little coming out of the end. There are two reasons for that. One is you can trap, later you can strip, taking it out. And then the second reason is you can stick that right in his teeth and his throat and his eye and his ear, stick it in his temple and his neck for self-defense. TK Julian Show, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Smashing down, so make sure there's a little bit coming out of the end. It's also gonna help you not lose it. If your hand's all the way at the end, you have less leverage. If you're here, it's gonna push into the web of your hand a little bit. So coming off that opposite shoulder is angle two. You have angle one, angle two. I like to do these basic strikes always coming off of your shoulder. And I, like, I know I've said that like seven times now, but there's a reason that it's important for you to bring it off your shoulder. And that is so that your strikes will always hit the center line in front of you and you're not gonna miss. If you bring it out here, and it's this big opening strike, you might wrap your arm around him. He's coming in, closing the distance, and you don't even hit him. If it's here, no matter how he's coming, he's gonna run straight into your stick, or your stick's gonna run into him for self-defense. So always come off that shoulder, coming off of one side and the other side, doing both sides evenly, and again, follow through with that strike. Make sure you have so much power. Popping chicken, can you make someone puke with body strikes? Um, depends on what they ate for lunch, I suppose. Uh, I have uh, kicked somebody so hard they threw up a long, long time ago in the stomach. Um, so I, I, I imagine you can make them throw up if you hit them. Uh, ask me that question again about the targeting. It fell off of my screen too fast. So you're gonna bring it from here to the other side. This is your right hand on your right side with your right foot forward. You're gonna bring it from your hip up to your shoulder. Now it's not coming off your shoulder, but it will come off your hip. So get it to your hip and then pull it through. And again, focus on that center line. You're gonna come up and through to the other side. Yeah, uh, Clarence says target whatever presents itself. So the question is, what's your, what target can you remove or destroy? And Clarence is talking about Tim Larkin's book, When Violence is the Answer. I'll put the link below. I'll also put a link in the description if you need a pair of these. Um, to train with or to carry for self-defense. They're called a scream of sticks. Uh, collarbone and chin is a good target, Michael says. Yes. Uh, I think temple, if you can knock him out, turn off his operating system. Jaw, right into the jaw, into the neck. You can hit that process of nerves. Blood flushes from his brain, knock him out into the shoulder, into the upper arm, elbow, ribs, coming down into the hips, into the thigh, into the knee. All those are with that first angle one strike same thing angle two you're going to find when you do this pulling strike you're going to have a lot more power so these two strikes very powerful coming off the hip you come up to the other side think about hitting him in the ribs as you come up snapping through drop it to your other hip and pull it up this way and again the focus is the center line of the body so you're coming up one two you go down down come up come up then i'm going to have you come across in this horizontal strike with your palm facing the sky and then come back this way. And then do the same thing on the other side, two down, coming from the hip, two up, come across, come back. And then finally, I'm gonna have you come straight down on top of his head, right on the forehead, right? Or maybe again, maybe he's reaching out with that knife and you're smashing his hand, breaking all of the bones in his hand for self-defense. He's pulling a knife on you. You have every right to smash the knife right out of his hand. Go through one, two, come up three, four, across and back, and then straight down on top, switching. When you have the left hand forward, put your left foot forward, striking down one, two, from your hip, three, four, coming across five, six, and then down. And as you do this, you're gonna realize that it's not as easy as it looks at the beginning to get all of these strikes tight. In other words, your, your strikes are gonna be wide. You're not gonna be on your shoulders if you don't pay attention to it. You're not gonna be on your hips. It's not gonna feel very strong, and that's not gonna be straight. 
unless you do it again and again and again. So practice, slow as smooth, smooth as fast. Very important on these basic beginner strikes with your Escrima or Collie sticks. Now, I wanna talk about one stick, and then we'll go back to two stick, because I want you to, I want you to get your Cinewale, your weaving pattern down. Hello, Rick, it's good to see you. Rick's training with me all the time. Uh, Rick, I really appreciate that. Appreciate you being here. Coming through one, two, three, four, five, six, down on top, and then I want you to thrust. Coming through right up. Alita Battle, good to see you. Coming up right into the throat, into the neck, into the face. Again, the question is, what target can you remove or destroy for self-defense? That's why these sticks could save your life, these short sticks. It's not about learning how to do the martial arts by itself. All that's great, and that's you want to learn how to do Kali, a scream of the Filipino martial arts. It's beautiful stuff. Learn it for because it's, it's beautiful to do. It, uh, it's philosophical, spiritual for a lot of people. It's good fit, physical fitness. It teaches you good practical self-defense techniques. But when we isolate self-defense, then I want you to be super practical. I only want you to do what works. So from here, that's this angle, this angle coming up. Striking, imagine he's reaching out, either punching or choking or stabbing, and you smash him. Maybe he's got hold of your loved one, and you're gonna use that, that hurt, <laughs> use that stick and smash and break through those bones because you're gonna be able to do that even with a simple Escrima stick like this. And again, the link's below if you wanna see how long they are and what they're made out of. They're made out of a rattan. These are made out of rattan. I also have hickory sticks. I have ironwood, if, if you guys know what ironwood is. And then I have a new line of wood self-defense tools coming that are gonna be my brand, that are gonna replace some of the ones that I've been uh, selling for years, that the relationship is shifting and changing. And I wanna have a great, I wanna have a good relationship, customer relationship with people who want quality self-defense tools. And they're gonna be mostly made out of Osage, which the Native Americans, used to make their bows out of. It's such a perfect wood for self-defense. Anyway, so we have these angle strikes down, coming up, horizontal, down on top, and then switching to the other side, bringing them up, bringing them across, down, and on top. Then, I want you to think of a two-handed strike. So holding your stick like you're gonna do a push-up. Think about smashing it through his nose, his teeth, his eyes, and then think about boxing the sides of his ears. Now, we'll roll in this bag so you can see a little bit. So you can strike here, grab, and then thrust, right? Strike here, grab, and thrust. Strike here, grab, and thrust. Once you're there, you can box the sides, you can pull, and then pushing with two hands. And again, this is not, you're not gonna find this in, not that I know of, in, in any, if all, or uh, Filipino martial arts schools, FMA schools. In fact, if you're an FMA, purist, you're probably, you haven't watched this long, but if you are still watching, you're cringing right now, because it's like, that's not how we train with those. Um, but I'm teaching you how we would train in the military if it were life and death, and I was getting ready to go close quarters combat, and I ran out of bullets, and I broke the bayonet, and then all I have left is the stick to hook and jab and defend myself with, then that's how I'm using it. I'm using it this way, using that bar of, of uh, wood, in this case, grass, going through his teeth, his nose, his eyes, boxing to his ears, smashing in like a rifle uh, bayonet attack, coming through the other side like a rifle butt strike, coming through here. I want you to bend your knees, get low, and then use that unloading of the legs, the spring of your legs, to thrust up and through his midsection or into the throat for self-defense. That's a fatal strike. Into his face, you'll push somebody back from here, I want you to pull your strike like this. This comes from the uh, Irish stick fighting arts, coming from here and then rolling here, striking. Those are very fast, explosive. If you practice them, become very fast, explosive, distracting strikes. And they also, I mean, they hit hard, right? You can strike here, strike here, smash down on top, hit him here, hit him here, come back out, keeping the distance the whole time, smashing through and coming down on top in order to keep them off. Now I do want to show you the Cinewale, which means weaving, the Cinewale pattern. Again, you're gonna have, um, uh, oh, Soren asked if the flicks will burst an the eardrum. They can, you can easily pop, but think of the tip. A lot of people don't think about these tips. Yeah, Alita Battle Angel says these are, strikes are great workout. 
every time I do it, I get my heart rate up, I breathe heavy, and I work out all day. So I'm usually really tired by the time I make these. And I'm still getting a great workout. But it's more than just, it's not just a, an annoying strike. The tip of these will rip the skin, they'll cut the skin. So if you, if you have the right distance and you're striking with that tip, you're gonna create, for self-defense, you're gonna create a lot of damage. That's why these short sticks could save your life, especially if he's got a bladed weapon and you don't have anything else. But if you have this, you have reach advantages. If you have two, you can push them off with one, hit them with the other one. You can hit them with both at the same time or in succession, however you want to look at it. So I want to talk about that weaving pattern and get rid of our bag. And the first thing I'm going to have you do is put it on your shoulders and practice that first strike coming out, coming to the head. And if you have a partner to do this with, that'd be awesome. If not, do it in the air. If you have something to hit like that bag, hit the bag. So think about going to the head and then going to the knees. So these are the basic opening strikes of a Sinawali pattern a weaving pattern. But then you're gonna come through angle one and bring it back in angle two, angle one and angle two, and do that for a while on each hand, remembering to come back and tap yourself. Cut yourself right there on the shoulder, on the collarbone, and bring it back. It's not gonna hurt, but it's gonna remind you to fight behind your sticks. I can't say that enough. Almost everybody I train with in person, they think they're doing, they think they're doing this, and they're really doing this. If you don't feel it, you're not doing it. Look in the mirror, put your phone on, and tape yourself, and make sure that you are fighting behind that stick. You want that stick to between, be between you and the threat, right? Especially if he's got a bladed weapon. One, these are also great. You know, these short sticks for self-defense could save your life against multiple attackers because they're force multipliers and you can do a lot of damage. So this, I like to think of as a V, right? This is one half of the V, that's the other half of the V. So now, you're gonna do one, bring it over, one, bring it over, and then bring the other one over, now your arms are crossed. So if you start uncrossed, you're gonna bring one over, your arms crossed, bring it over, your arms crossed, bring it back, your arms uncrossed, bring it back, your arms uncrossed. So there's one, two, three, four. So it's really angle one with your right hand, angle one with your left hand, angle two with your right hand, angle two with your left hand. So this base, that's just a really basic Sinawali weaving pattern. And you can see now what I'm doing is I'm putting right hand on top, left hand on top, right hand on top, left hand on top. And I want you to practice that. And not that you're going to do this for self-defense. Billy, we'll see you later. Thanks for being here. But not just coming, yeah, casting around the head, Soren says, not just practicing like you're gonna use this when you defend yourself, you might not, but this is going to disguise the repetition of the strikes, meaning that you're, it's like when you, in kicking martial arts or punching martial arts, when we use a speed bag, the speed bag is to desensitize yourself to a fist coming at your face. That's why you hit the bag and it's going back and forth, back and it's usually the color of a glove. So it does that, it helps with your timing, it helps with your distance, your rhythm but it's also building endurance in your arms, keeping your hands up. So think of this as working the speed bag. And as you get faster and faster, you can start to turn around a little bit, you can go lower, you can go higher, you can start to do those strikes to the knees so that you have low strikes and not high strikes. And it's just, this is very simple. There are many Sinawali patterns. We can do a high and a low one. You can do an up and a down. So you have four strikes instead of three. But right now, I just want you to get this upper pattern. I'm slowing it way down so you can see where we are. And if it's helpful for you, you can always rewatch these portions and turn off the sound because it sounds funny. And hit those little dots in the upper right-hand corner and it gives you playback speed. And turn the playback speed slow enough you get your slow motion. I know I'm not bringing it back all the way, but I wanted to keep my hands in the camera. But you want to bring it back all the way. And then the next level is to come in a chambered position. 
and I have you just focusing on your upper body and not the feet yet. Eventually, you're going to be stepping with strikes as you come in in your triangle steps. We have the male triangle and the female triangle, and some of you know what that is, and you don't have to do that already. But for today, we're just focusing on these basic strikes. So practice those. Let me know in the comment section below if you have a screamer or collie or our knee sticks already. Did you make your own? That's how I started. I cut a, a mop handle in half and I had mine and they weren't fancy and they weren't authentic and they didn't come from uh, bamboo or um, rattan. They weren't rattan, but I had some collie sticks and that's the best way. I always say invest your time before you invest your money. So you can go below, look at the link and then buy a pair if you want, or if you're not ready to spend your money, find an old broom, find two sticks and start with that. See if you actually like it. See if you can generate power in those strikes. See if you can picture yourself defending yourself against multiple attackers or a knife with a short stick that could save your life. And then if you like it, then go deeper. But you guys have been awesome. Thanks for being here and I'll see you on the next.